Difficulties and challenges are proposals for evolution for the Chosen Ones. You have been called by God for a special purpose, and with this divine call, you will face unique challenges. Today, we're going to understand how to face eight obstacles that arise on the path of the Chosen Ones and turn them into opportunities for growth. These are not just minor inconveniences. They are real, tangible issues that test even the strongest faith. The last of these problems is the most challenging of all, and we must be careful that it doesn't overwhelm us, so it's essential to know about it. For the Chosen Ones, the family is often full of problems, which lead to great and endless worries. Instead of complaining, we need to learn to be grateful and look to the wise higher laws of life for added strength. Each stage we overcome leads to a more solid level of confidence and credibility in the days ahead. These family challenges may seem overwhelming, but they are opportunities to strengthen yourself as a chosen one. In the professional field, difficult puzzles arise. It's essential to search our potential in search of resources for overcoming them that we all carry within us. Once we have found the solutions, we become more mature and able to face the struggles that will always exist. What about the critical and precarious financial situation? Divine providence never abandons us. Go on confidently, finding the necessary resources to fulfill our duties. Together, as chosen ones, we can turn challenges into stepping stones for our spiritual and personal evolution. Being chosen by God means being separated, and this separation often leads to feelings of isolation and incomprehension. These trials are part of a larger context. Each of these challenges has a purpose in God's plan for you. And remember, you are not alone. The Bible is full of stories of individuals who faced similar trials and emerged stronger and more devoted to God. Why are we delving into these problems? Because understanding them is the first step to overcoming them. Knowledge is power, and with the wisdom of Scripture, we can navigate these difficulties with grace and strength. We'll provide practical advice, biblical references, and encouragement to help you stand firm in your faith. As we go through each problem, reflect on your own journey. Think about how these challenges have manifested themselves in your life and how God has guided you through them. This isn't just about identifying problems. It's about finding solutions rooted in faith and divine wisdom. Every struggle you face is a stepping stone towards the fulfillment of your God-given purpose. Stay alert, stay encouraged, and remember, you were chosen for a reason. Let's dive in and discover these challenges together. Obstacle 1. Isolation Isolation is often the first challenge that every Chosen One faces. The journey of faith, especially for those set apart by God, can seem incredibly lonely. You may find yourself in moments of loneliness, wondering why the path you are walking seems so deserted. This isolation is not only physical, but also emotional and spiritual. It's the feeling of being alone in a crowded room, of not fitting in, even among those who share your faith. It's important to understand that isolation and loneliness are not synonymous. They are different conditions. You can be surrounded by people and still feel alone. Loneliness does not automatically imply that you are in a process of divine isolation, nor that God has isolated you. Sometimes loneliness arises for reasons that do not involve direct action by God. On the other hand, divine isolation is a specific tool used by God for purposes such as preparation, empowerment, and elevation. This intentional period of growth and reflection focuses on the presence of a deeper connection with God rather than the absence of company. As chosen ones, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. This call inherently sets us apart. When you decide to follow Christ fully, your values and priorities begin to change, creating a distance between you 
and those who don't share the same journey. Friends and even family members may not understand your new convictions, leading to a feeling of separation and isolation. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But narrow is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This scripture highlights the fact that the path of righteousness is narrow and little frequented, contributing to the isolation we often feel. According to the Bible, God uses isolation to distinguish individuals. In Genesis, we see God summoning Abraham and commanding him to leave his homeland and his people, promising to make them a great nation. This command shows that isolation can be the starting point for greatness. Great personalities and legacies often develop in isolation. This process is not a punishment, but a divine preparation for those chosen by God. During these moments, we discover a strength and resilience that we didn't know we possessed, learning to depend more deeply on God. To combat isolation, it's important to find a community of believers who share your faith. Look for church groups, Bible studies, or Christian fellowships where you can connect with others who understand and share your journey. Being in a supportive community can ease feelings of isolation and provide much needed encouragement. Remember the words of the Psalm, God makes the lonely live in families. God places us in spiritual families where we can find connection and support. Seek out mentors, spiritual leaders, or trusted friends within your faith community who can offer guidance and companionship. Take practical steps to combat isolation. Get involved in activities that connect you with others who share your faith. Volunteer for church activities. Join a Christian book club or participate in community outreach activities. Use technology to your advantage. Join online Christian forums. Participate in virtual Bible studies and listen to podcasts or watch videos that provide spiritual nourishment, such as from this channel, and interact with others chosen here. These resources can help bridge the gap during times when physical fellowship is not possible. Isolation can feel like a heavy burden, but it is also a powerful tool that God uses to draw us closer to Him. Embrace these moments as opportunities for growth. The path of the chosen is narrow and often lonely, but it leads to eternal life and a deeper, more satisfying relationship with God. You were chosen for a reason, and your journey, although lonely at times, is never without purpose. Lean on God's promises, seek community, and turn your isolation into a time of deep spiritual connection. God is with you, guiding you every step of the way. Let's move forward, embracing solitude as a sacred space where God's voice can be heard more clearly. Obstacle 2. Misunderstanding and Criticism Chosen people often face misunderstanding and criticism. Your values and beliefs can be misinterpreted by others, resulting in painful judgments and conflicts. You may be called overly religious, out of touch with reality, or even fanatical. These misunderstandings can come from friends, family, work colleagues, or even strangers, making the journey of faith a great challenge. This is because the life of a Christian goes against the norms of society. Living by principles that defy social standards inevitably leads to misunderstandings. Jesus himself faced criticism from the religious leaders of the time who didn't understand his teachings or his mission, often accusing him of blasphemy and of being an agitator. Jesus reminded us, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. If you were of the world, it would love you as it loves its own. But you are not of the world, but I have chosen you, having taken you out of the world. Therefore the world hates you. John 15, 18-19 This passage highlights that criticism is inevitable, 
when we choose to follow Christ. In addition, we need to learn to deal with criticism and disagreement in a less fearful and unhurt way, with serenity and fraternity. Those who take on a prominent role in any human movement naturally become targets of both agreement and disagreement. Accepting or not accepting are inevitable possibilities, and understanding this is the fruit of a maturity that we all need to develop. Disagreeing with or criticizing someone's idea or stance does not mean removing them from their position. It's not an attack on the person, but simply thinking, feeling, and wanting differently. This is perfectly natural, human, and necessary in our evolutionary learning. It is possible to disagree with what someone says and maintain a healthy coexistence, maintain respect, nurture affection, and agree on many other things with that same person. Diverging and criticizing ideas and attitudes does not mean that we are necessarily right or wrong. It's simply a consequence of being able to think and decide freely. Anyone who tries to suppress this right shows little understanding of the essence of our learning here. Reflect on the times you have been misunderstood or criticized for your faith. How did you feel? It's normal to feel pain or frustration. However, these moments can remind you of the strength of your convictions. Each criticism can be an opportunity to reflect on the depth of your faith and your commitment to God. Criticism can be painful, but remember that you are not alone. Jesus faced similar challenges, as have countless believers throughout history. Find comfort in knowing that your experiences are part of a bigger story, the story of faith. When facing misunderstanding and criticism, stand firm in prayer and in the scriptures. Let God's word be your source of strength and guidance. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Use the Bible to find comfort and direction in these moments. Seek support in your faith community. Surround yourself with people who understand and share your beliefs. They can offer empathy, advice, and encouragement. It is essential to have a support system that strengthens your faith and helps you face challenges. There are practical steps to dealing constructively with criticism. First, practice patience and understanding. Remember that others may criticize out of ignorance or fear. Respond with kindness and love, reflecting the grace of Christ. Engage in open and respectful dialogues. Sometimes criticism arises from a lack of understanding. Take the time to explain your beliefs and listen to the other person's perspective. This can build bridges and foster mutual respect. Use criticism as an opportunity for growth. Reflect on valid points and consider how you can improve or better express your faith. This doesn't mean compromising your beliefs, but rather refining how you live and communicate them. Misunderstanding and criticism are difficult but inevitable parts of being a chosen one. They test your determination and commitment to God's way. However, these challenges also offer opportunities for growth, reflection, and a deeper connection with God. Embrace these moments as part of your spiritual journey. Stand firm in your faith, respond with love and patience, and seek support in your community. Remember, you have been chosen for a divine purpose, and God is with you every step of the way. Let's move forward, turning criticism into a catalyst for deeper faith. Obstacle 3. Temptation the elect often face temptation in three main areas, physical, spiritual, and emotional. These temptations are tools that the enemy uses to divert you from the divine purpose and lure you into the ephemeral pleasures of this world. Let's take a closer look at each of these areas and how they manifest themselves. The first area of temptation is physical. Physical temptation concerns the needs and desires of the body. Jesus, during his 40 days of fasting in the desert, was tempted by the devil to turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. Jesus replied that man shall not live by bread alone, showing that the satisfaction of physical needs must not take precedence over obedience to God. 
Physical temptations often arise in moments of loneliness, weakness, or when we seek ease. When we are alone, the enemy tries to plant tempting thoughts. In moments of weakness, such as hunger or tiredness, temptations seem more attractive. And when we look for the easy way out, we can give in to desires that lead us away from God. Ask yourself, what are your physical weaknesses? Resist temptation by controlling the desires of the flesh and seeking God's strength. The second area of temptation is spiritual. Jesus was taken by the devil to see all the kingdoms of the world and offered all the power and glory if he would fall down and worship Satan. Jesus replied that you should worship the Lord your God and only him. Spiritual temptation often involves pride, delusions of grandeur, and the desire for power. The enemy tries to inflate our ego and make us seek earthly power, distracting us from the true worship of God. It's important to remember that the devil can disguise himself as light, but we must be vigilant and firm in our faith. If you are easily proud, seek power, or are carried away by illusions, be vigilant. God deserves exclusivity in our worship. How is your spiritual life? Worship God and not yourself. The third area of temptation is emotional. The devil took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and suggested that he throw himself from there because the angels would protect him. Jesus replied that one should not tempt the Lord, his God. Emotional temptations exploit our deepest feelings and desires. We are often at our most emotionally vulnerable when we are doubting or seeking validation. The devil tries to deceive us and provoke doubts about our identity in God. He uses the word of God in a distorted way to confuse and deceive. We need to control our desires and emotions and not let them rule us. If you act on unstable emotions, have constant doubts, or are easily deceived, take care not to fall prey to emotional temptations. Can you control your desires? In all these areas, temptation is a common human experience. However, God gives us the strength and the means to overcome it. To resist temptation, it is essential to immerse yourself in prayer and scripture, seek accountability in a community of faith, and avoid situations where you are most vulnerable. Develop a strong and consistent prayer life. Refer to Bible verses that resonate with you, and get involved in constructive activities that align with your faith. Temptation is an inevitable part of the Chosen One's journey, but it is also an opportunity to grow and strengthen your faith. Each time you resist temptation, you become stronger in your faith and closer to God. Embrace these moments as opportunities to demonstrate your commitment to your divine calling. Remain vigilant, stay in prayer, and trust that God will provide you with the strength you need to stay on His path. You have been chosen for a greater purpose, and with God's help, you can overcome any temptation. Let's move forward, equipped with the wisdom and power to resist and continue our journey of faith with confidence and grace. Obstacle 4. Doubt. Why do the chosen experience doubt? Doubt often emerges in moments of crisis and when what we hope for doesn't materialize in the way we imagine. These uncertainties tend to arise when we face adversity or when our hopes don't materialize, causing us to question our beliefs and the path we're on. Doubt is a common experience, even among the great biblical characters. Moses, for example, doubted his ability to lead the Israelites, while Thomas needed to see Jesus' wounds to believe in his resurrection. These stories illustrate that doubt is a natural part of the journey of God's chosen ones, Reflect on the moments when doubt has entered your heart. What triggered these feelings? How did you respond? Be honest about your feelings and ask for guidance and reassurance. When we face doubt, it's important to remember that it can be an opportunity to deepen our faith. 
When we experience these uncertainties, we should bring them to God in prayer, being honest about our feelings and asking for His guidance and reassurance. In Philippians, we are encouraged not to be anxious about anything, but to present our requests to God with thanksgiving, trusting that God's peace will guard our hearts and minds. Obstacle 5. Persecution This painful and challenging reality is something that many chosen people face because of their faith and commitment to God. Persecution can take many forms, from criticism and social ostracism to physical violence and discrimination. Whatever form it takes, persecution tests the faith, resilience, and determination of the chosen. Persecution occurs because following Christ often puts the chosen at odds with the norms and values of the world. Jesus warned his followers that they would be hated by the world because of their association with him. This warning serves as a reminder that persecution is an expected part of the Christian walk. When the chosen live according to divine principles, they inevitably confront systems and mentalities that oppose those values. Being chosen also means that you will often face rejection from the world. This is not just about your identity, but also about what you stand for. Other chosen ones will be drawn to you, creating genuine connections and relationships based on spiritual kinship. It's important to remember that resistance and persecution don't only come from external sources. Family members, those closest to you, may not understand your calling, and may unknowingly act as agents of the adversary. They may not understand the reason for your opposition, which may be rooted in your battles. Obstacle 6. Discouragement Discouragement is a widespread and debilitating challenge that many chosen ones face. It stems from personal failings, unanswered prayers and ongoing trials, and can drain energy and hope. Discouragement can drain your energy, diminish your hope, and make you question your faith and purpose. Even biblical figures like Elijah and David faced such moments. Galatians encourages perseverance, promising a harvest if we don't give up. To combat discouragement, turn to God in prayer, immerse yourself in His Word, seek support from a community of faith, and practice gratitude and service. These actions help shift the focus from the struggles to God's blessings and purposes. Remember, God is with you, and His steadfast love and promises provide the strength to overcome discouragement and continue your journey of faith. Obstacle 7. Your spirit can upset others. Have you noticed that some people dislike you for no clear reason or react strongly to you? This is because your aura filled with the Holy Spirit, disturbs the demons in them. Their hostility usually reflects their inner spiritual struggles. These challenges are part of your journey as a chosen one, meant to strengthen and prepare you for your divine mission. Remember, your experiences confirm your calling and the work of the Holy Spirit through you. Carrying the Holy Spirit, His presence can trigger reactions in those influenced by negative spirits. Even Christ, who lived a pure and selfless life, faced opposition. His integrity does not protect him from being a target of those under dark influences. Therefore, it is important to understand that the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life can unwittingly reveal the true nature of those around you. These negative reactions, although painful, indicate that you are on the right path, aligned with divine and spiritual values, that challenge the negative influences in your environment. Obstacle 8. Spiritual Warfare Spiritual warfare is a battle that takes place in the spiritual realm between the forces of good, represented by God and his angels, and the forces of evil, led by Satan and his demons. It is a struggle that involves the destiny of souls and the fulfillment of God's purposes on earth. Spiritual warfare is not just a metaphor, but a spiritual reality that directly impacts the lives of the elect. 
It is an intense and often invisible battle that every chosen one must face. This war manifests itself in various ways. Temptations, doubts, fears, and even direct spiritual attacks. Why is spiritual warfare such a critical part of these enlightened people's journey? Because the enemy, Satan, seeks to destroy the faith and effectiveness of God's chosen ones. Spiritual warfare is a testimony to the enemy's recognition of our potential impact for God's kingdom. The more you advance in your faith, the more intense the attacks can be. Prayer is our most powerful weapon. Also, seek fellowship and accountability. Surround yourself with other chosen ones who can support you, pray for you, and encourage you. Spiritual warfare is not to be fought alone. And if anyone prevails against one, two will resist him. The threefold cord is not easily broken. So, my friends, your path is challenging, but it has a purpose. Every struggle, be it isolation, misunderstanding, temptation, doubt, persecution, spiritual warfare or discouragement, helps to deepen your faith. This journey is not just a personal quest, but a service to humanity and the divine. By committing themselves to this higher purpose, the chosen ones transcend their own limitations and become agents of transformation in a world that so desperately needs love, compassion, and wisdom. May you go forward with courage and determination, guided by the light that dwells in your hearts. Remember, you are not alone in your struggles. God is with you, guiding and strengthening you every step of the way. The path of faith is paved with trials that test and refine us, but it is also a journey filled with God's love, grace, and unwavering promises. Embrace these challenges as opportunities to draw closer to Him, understand His purpose for you, and demonstrate His love and light to the world. When studying the chosen lessons of life, we need confidence and optimism. There is no suffering that is not learning. There are no trials that are not opportunities. There are no actions that don't bring results. There are no atonements that do not promote the rectification of neglected duties. If life seems painful, let's trust. If obstacles overwhelm our efforts, let's trust. If the caresses of fortune welcome our soul, let us trust. As Paul said, writing to the Thessalonians, in everything give thanks, to remind us of the benefit of trust.